Here's an AMI This Week shortcut with Alex Smythe. Welcome to Animal Class. I'm at the Edmonton Valley Zoo, where I'm joined by zookeeper Trevor Hickey and animal care lead Wade Krasnow, who is handling the Arctic wolf Shyla on a leash. Trevor, can you tell me a bit about Shyla? So Shyla is an Arctic wolf, which means that her coat is very, very white. It's almost pure white, but she does have some black in it. And it's the same color in the summer and in the winter. It just gets a little bit longer and fluffier in the winter, and that's to help insulate her in those cold Arctic temperatures. Their ears are a little bit smaller than a gray wolf would be, and their snout's a little bit shorter, and they're a little bit smaller of a species too than, a, than a, say, a gray wolf you'd see in this area. But for Arctic wolves, she's a good size. She weighs about uh, 37 kilograms, or about 80 pounds, maybe a little bit less, which is a normal size for a female. She's got a, a very large head compared to, say, a domestic dog. So even a domestic dog around the same size as her would have a smaller head and smaller jaws, especially in smaller teeth. Wolves have a very powerful bite strength and there's very few domestic dogs that have a bite strength even close to theirs. Her ears are pointy. Uh, they're not rounded or floppy like a lot of domestic dogs are. They're, they're pointy and upright and they can swivel them forward and backward depending on where the sound they're listening to is. Her eyes are kind of a brownish, ambery color. Unlike some wolves, she's very apt to look people straight in the eye. A lot of wolves won't do that. It's, it's a sign of dominance. Um, but because she's so comfortable around humans, she doesn't have that problem really. She has long toenails and claws. They're good for digging. They'll dig through the ice. She's got a tail. It's about a foot long, foot and a half long, just like a, a dog. They don't generally use it the way that dogs do. You won't see her wagging it very often. It's used a lot more for communicating with other wolves. How she's feeling right now, it's just flopped behind her, which means that she's really relaxed. Um, if it were sticking straight out or her hair was standing up, it would tell us that maybe she's worried about something or stressed about something. When I think of a wolf, there is the iconic howl. So a lot of times when they're howling, there's a few different things that we think they use them for. Uh, one is pack communication within members of the pack. A lot of times they'll howl just to hear where each other are in the range because the howl can be heard for kilometers away. Um, so well out of sight range, but they'll still be able to howl to each other. It's also thought to be used as a way to communicate to other packs that they're entering a certain wolf's territory or a certain pack's territory. And so they'll howl to let other wolves know that this is where they are, so other wolves maybe steer clear of that area. So the Arctic wolves live in the tundra, so there's very little vegetation, there's very little trees. How often does the Arctic wolf have to hunt? Um, so they're always looking for food. Um, and they're hunting whenever the opportunity arises. They've, they'll, they'll follow caribou herds and stuff. That's one of their main sources of food. But they're happy to eat anything from about the size of a mouse to a moose. Now, how fast can a Arctic wolf run? Um, they can reach speeds of up to about 60 kilometers an hour, and that's their high speed. And they can maintain speeds of around 40 to 50 kilometers an hour, so they can outlast those caribou or outlast those bison when they're, they're chasing them down. Thank you so much, Trevor, Wade, and Shiloh for taking the time to uh, meet with me and educate me a bit on the Arctic wolf. So next time I'm out up north and I hear a howl in the night, I know a bit more about the creature that's making that noise. 